Okay, so I think I got disconnected, but I'm just gonna go from here. Um, so you are in my studio in Los Angeles, California, um, and I got my MFA from the University of Tennessee in 2008 with a concentration in printmaking. Um, wonderful program there, so really grateful to have had that experience in graduate school. Um, so I'm going to be giving you a tour um, of my studio just to kind of give you an idea of what I've been up to since um, the coronavirus kind of took over my practice a little bit with regards to how much I travel. So usually as an installation artist, um, I am on the road um, 75 to 90 percent of the year. Um, but because of what's happened as we kind of recalibrate and shift into this new pause, um, I have been spending much more time in my studio than I think ever. I mean, at some point um, after leaving graduate school, I became a college professor and I did that for five years and then I resigned um, and I was able to travel and make work for six years um, until now. So the coronavirus has definitely altered my um, everyday practice, but it has given me an opportunity to focus on the nuances in the studio. So I do make installation work that covers the outside of buildings and um, consumes the inside of spaces. But in tandem with that, I'm also constantly working on a series of paper sculpture, um, sculptural works that are displayed as terrariums, either in acrylic domes or in custom made wooden boxes with um, UVM, UV plexi. Um, I think that this is kind of like how I harness my, um, my vocabulary and in intimate environment, the Felix specimen. So let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So for those of you who don't know my work, um, I explore the natural world and also the unfamiliar um, in hybrid bioforms that are paper sculptures. So one of the things that I did when I was in graduate school was I focused on printmaking. And I realized really quickly that paper, like any other material, has dimensional capabilities. So um, when it came to making my own work, um, using printmaking primarily as a way to get the ink onto the paper so that I could create the sculptural components um, became my main focus. Um, so with regards to concept and ideas, I mean, I'm interested in ecology, the natural landscape, um, things that seem otherworldly but are familiar to us based off of the different forms and everything found in nature. So honeycomb structures, petals, um, scales, hybrid, um, yeah, hybrid biojunk at some point I called it, but um, you can see the different kind of versions of this in each of the pieces. Um, so for me, it's really important that I work intuitively. So a lot of people ask me about how I even begin something like this. And I am going to show you guys a quick gesture drawing at the end of this um, live feed just to give you an idea of what an intuitive moment looks like in my world. Um, but even in drawing, the intuitive marks are not for me to work directly from. It's more for me to exercise my vocabulary. Um, so here's one in progress. My studio is not massive, but it gives me just what I need, um, especially since the installations are all site specific. So really, I just need to be able to make these pieces. Um, so here are some of my tools. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm creating some kind of like tiny microscopic, um, weird surgical pr procedure. Um, and the pieces themselves become kind of like accumulations of bioparticles. Um, so this is the piece that I'm working on right now. Um, oh, this is an experiment that doesn't belong there. Um, so each piece is cut from these gradients, which I've printed through an open screen. So screen printing has the remarkable capability of getting ink down onto paper, non-fade and making it archival. So it's one of the things that I really like I, um, about being able to print my own gradients and have complete control. I mean, getting 
colored paper is challenging in general, but when you have control over the palette that you're using, you can create any atmosphere and any tone. So um, the background is all painted, but the paper is printed, and then I use <laughs> an X-Acto blade to cut every single tiny little shape and make all of the elements themselves. Um, there, there are moments where I'm working and I'm making these tedious shapes and I can't believe this is actually what I do. <laughs> um, but I do like the idea that it accumulates, like natural forms. I mean, like these tiny particles become something massive as you start to grow them. Um, so other parts of the studio, office, coffee, next important thing, um, and the chop saw, which is by far one of the things that I use more than anything in, in the space. Um, and drying rack for screen printing. So I'm really fortunate to have really good partnerships with really good companies. Um, so that's wonderful, good ink. Um, and this is it. This is where the magic happens. It's so simple. I mean, for a long time I was traveling and I had to kind of like have a studio on the fly. So I needed to make um, a process or I needed to develop a technique that was important for me to be able to do anywhere. So all I need is a screen, a table, and some masking tape. So I have screen printed gradients for these pieces in, in yards, in like borrowed spaces, in between big projects, like from, I'm in Singapore one day and then I come back and I'm screen printing in somebody's backyard and then I'm back out on the road again. So um, it becomes something really easy um, to, de to kind of build off of. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just using regular squeegees and then each of the new pieces um, that I'm working on, the new body of work is all, they're all encased in these acrylic domes. So the domes themselves are really substantial. Um, they're typically used for aquariums. So I like the idea that it's the same kind of discovery. Um, so if you walk into a space where you can stick your head into a bubble and see a shark, you know, go over your head, it's a similar kind of like um, exploration when it comes to these things, but they are very substantial in that way. And um, this one experiment, <laughs> a complete sphere. Um, and these are some of the gesture drawings that um, I'll kind of be giving you an example here um, of. But, ooh, there's a print that I did at the University of Tennessee as a visiting artist last year, a lithograph, wonderful experience. Um, and yeah, so that's the basic kind of like scope of the space. Um, I've had some really unique experiences and this year as I kind of like settle into practice in the studio and um, kind of, it's, it's definitely much more um, solitary now um, as like things quiet down, but in all of it, it kind of gives me a moment to really recalibrate and um, yeah, focus on the details and the nuance of the new hemisphere pieces. Um, I did have an experience where I got to work for Nike and when I was working with them, I was working with Kobe Bryant. So um, the idea that this year he passed away and there have been so many remarkable people that have um, moved from the external to the internal landscape um, you know, those are things that are constantly going on when I'm in the studio. Um, so I don't know if there are any comments or anything. <laughs> so I'm not used to doing this live feed. Um, but while I'm here, I did want to give you guys a little bit of a demonstration um, with regards to my gestural drawings and my practice when it comes to the two-dimensional language. Um, I think one of the things about being an artist is that for me, it was, it's so much more about um, honing in on, on our specific vocabulary and language. And what that means to me is like the things that I find specifically interesting um, in the world that we live in and our relationship with the natural landscape and 
um, our atrophy to the field and our peripheral vision, like those are things that I'm thinking about with regards to the small specimen works and also with regards to the larger installation pieces. So anytime that I get to kind of investigate my own vocabulary with regards to image making, um, I feel like I get a little bit closer to knowing myself and my own relationship with the natural, natural world. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a quick gesture demo. Um, so I typically do this when I come in in the morning just as a quick exercise. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Um, and for me, the gesture drawing is important because oh, it gives me the freedom to kind of just move. Um, and it's funny, I tried to get my children to come in today, but they, <laughs> they decided to stay home. Um, but one of the things that I was talking to my son recently about is his preference in artwork and the idea of like representational or abstract. And he told me that he likes abstract work and, and his answer had to do with like his ability to explore it. And I, I love that um, because for myself, like it's important that I am giving somebody something to explore, but it's not just a, a blob without any kind of architectural emphasis. Um, for me, I want the work to have more power with regards to the inherent structure. Um, I think sometimes that it's like a combination of like the whimsical line and the architectural edge, like those two in combination, like the coalescing of those things, um, is exciting to me and that's where I find like things that are familiar yet foreign or um, something that seems otherworldly I mean it really is about that um, that duality um, for me so when it comes to the gesture drawing it really is just about the movement and this is again like an exercise that I do um, and I love the way that the line moves I mean for me Drawing is a conversation. So, like anything else that we do, um, we react to certain things. So based off of who we are, what our specific emphasis or intentions are in the universe, um, we have certain things that we kind of like want to pull forward. So when I'm drawing, I really am just allowing the marker to move. Um, it's funny, I've never, I never thought that I would only use pen and marker, um, but at some point I realized that by using only ink, I was forced to kind of, like, I was forced to have that dialogue and not rely on erasing the work. And I can see when I'm working like, the way that something is starting to become. And there's this like, um, the notion of teleology in, in philosophy and ecology, but where something is intentionally moving towards something, um, not just randomly, um, but it has structure um, and purpose that way. And I feel that sometimes when I'm working on these. Um, I don't even know if you can actually see what I'm doing. So, as um, I'm working, and this is so similar to the way that I work in installations and also on the paper sculptures, I mean, a part of what I want is I want access to the way that I really see. Um, so I don't walk into a building and say, okay, I'm going to make this with a specific plan. I walk into the building and I look at the architecture and I think, well, how does something grow through here? And then I start moving and working. Um, each space that I've created installations in, they all have specific and unique kinds of um, architectural like, characteristics. And each of the installations uses those characteristics to its advantage, whether it's an extreme height, like the piece ball that I did at the University of Tennessee um, as a visiting artist, or spire that I did um, at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art where it went up to a crescent shaped skylight but it was about the height and replicating the architectural um, characteristics in the space itself. 
for things like this, the gesture is limited, of course, to the size of the paper, but I feel like once you reach in and you know what your language is, it doesn't really matter what the material is. Um, you can kind of use anything to create um, things within your vocabulary based off of your intention, of course, and the way that you want to communicate. Um, but, so, that's everything I think I have for you guys. Um, I'm so happy to share my space um, with the University of Tennessee and, of course, like, the people beyond it. So, thank you for visiting me, and I hope that everybody is staying safe and that they are well and that we continue to remember that on the other side of all of this we are we are here we are all here <laughs> thank you